Joining us now is Chukaramuna, one of the seven Labour MPs who quit the party yesterday. Uh, certainly the most prominent, I would have thought, of the group. So does that make you leader of the pack, de facto? No, look, we're an independent group. We're not like a political party. We don't have an organisation. We don't have a leader. Um, Why but... not? Why not? I mean, you know, well, the SDP fun... did. Well, we're, we're not the SDP. Um, this is a different century. We've got different challenges as a country, but um, clearly... I can only apologise. Clearly, clearly. <laughs> but, um, uh, what, you know, the problem that we've got is we have a system which is broken. Our politics is broken. And if you look at the established parties, they are deeply divided. I think, you know, even their supporters acknowledge, people usually vote for them, acknowledge that they haven't been fulfilling their duties with the competence people expect. And they seem to make decisions in their own party political interest and not the national interest. And, you know, exhibit A is Brexit. You know, whether you vote Leave or Remain, whether you're a Labour or a Tory voter, you look at that and you think none of these parties are properly serving the people. And we had, in addition to that, specific concerns, particularly about the Labour leadership stance on national security. We would not uh, entrust the national security of this country to the Labour leader. Yes, but if you're, just a, bunch of, if you're just a bunch of independents and, and you're not a, a coherent party with that's a title what and a direction, what's the point? What's the point? So, what so, 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 so that's a perfectly fair question, and we think there needs to be an alternative. We think the choice that you have at the moment at the ballot box, where you're basically either, you know, voting for the least worst option or to keep the other lot out, but you're not making a positive vote for something is not satisfactory. So we believe there should be an alternative. Uh, an alternative party. What you Whether for? it's a party what, what... or it's... A I'll come on to that, OK? OK. Whether it's a party or, or a movement, um, we, we're not, you know, being prescriptive about that because you can't cook this up in the committee corridors of Westminster. You've actually got to bring people mm -hmm. into the conversation. And one of the advantages, actually, about our group is that we're a group of MPs of different generations, uh, different backgrounds, um, you know, three uh, women, four men. What do we believe in? We set out, a, in detail, a list of our values, if you like, uh, and, you know, if you look at the areas of difference with the Labour Party, for example, we are absolutely clear we think the uh, country is far better off being a member of the European Union, but it's bigger than that because we believe we're much better placed to deliver better outcomes for people at home by cooperating mm -hmm. with other countries abroad. That's a fundamental principle we believe in. And you've done a lot, actually, I've been watching your coverage of Facebook and the social media giants, for example. These people don't operate in one country, they operate across several, so we should work with our other partners. We want a strong national defence. Vince, Vince, Cables, Vince Cable said here, literally in the last half hour, that he thinks your lot are quite a lot like his lot. Um, and you could um, well have seen him on your way in as he went yeah. out. Did you have a chance to speak? I mean, he seemed yeah, you know, very Vince, keen I, I used to, to look, join, I used join to shadow. work together. I, so I used to shadow Vince. I used mm. to be a shadow business secretary when he was a business secretary. And this is part of what I think people hate about politics, because actually we found, although I was supposed to spar with Vince and disagree with him on everything, because mm. that's what the system says you should do, actually, yeah, there were things I disagreed with him on, like, for example, the private of the Royal Mail. But on the other hand, there was lots of areas of agreement. And so we found, when we were working in that way, well, what's the point in pretending there's disagreement when actually there's agreement? Now, my, my view is there is a kind of progressive politics, if you like, that sits in the different traditions that there are in British politics. There is a centre-left uh, around the Labour Party, there is a Liberal tradition, and there's like a, what is called this One Nation Tory tradition. Now, you've actually got three, you know, people there in three groups who actually have a lot more in common than they do in their parties. So, obviously, it makes sense for those people to come together and work together. So, give us a time scale. When are we going to be talking to you in the studio, talking about the new party, the new title, um, bigger numbers of, of people who've joined you? Wh wh you know, how long are you going to basically sit around waiting for people to come to the party? Well, in fairness to us, Richard, <laughs> we only jumped it's yesterday. 24 hours ago. Yeah, it's 24 hours ago. But look, um, in, in good time, you know... I, we... well, what does that mean? Well, look, I would like to see us move uh, as quickly as possible and certainly by the end of the year, but that's my personal So, before view. the next election? Yes, absolutely. Look, we, what, So, we're what... looking at, at another party, um, a, a, a centre party with a new name and a new leader, it could well be you, w in the next, what, nine months? Look, there, there needs to be an alternative, so that's perfectly possible. Right. Um, but I don't get to determine this. And one of the things we're determined to do differently is to actually have a different culture. One of the main reasons that we left the Labour Party was because of the absolutely appalling culture that has evolved within it. Uh, Luciana Berger, my, my, my colleague and friend, has been subject to the most awful abuse on the basis of her background being Jewish. 
And you don't, you know, look, some people say, well, you know, just stay and fight in this old party. But the problem is that you don't go into politics to spend years fighting you people in the party yeah. that you're about. You, you yeah. go into politics to change the world. And actually, what, what we found is the time you were spending on the kind of internal factional fighting and all that was actually time you should have been spending serving your constituents. And this just illustrates really how broken our politics is, because you've got these two... Not, no longer sustainable coalitions in these parties where they're pretending they agree on everything, when actually they don't. And are you absolutely don't. sure that you've done the right thing? In the sense that, I mean, 48 hours ago, you were part of the Labour Party. You were part of a big organisation. A big that, emotional that, that, thing. Yeah, absolutely, a, with a big emotional time. investment. And now you're a freelance, basically. I think you're a gun got, for hire. But I, I think you've got to do what's right by your values and what you believe in. And the problem was, was that our values were no longer matched by the actions of the Labour Party. And when did you reach that conclusion? At what point did you wake up and think, I can't stand this, I can't stand this guy as my leader, I can't stand reading all this anti-Semitic guff on the internet, some of which is coming from within the party, I can't stand the excuses that are being made for it, I can't stand this guy, I'm off. When, when did that light bulb come I up? I think there were two things on that. I mean, when I really thought, I, I don't know how I can stay in this party anymore... Right. Um, was around March, April last year. When? When what the, an, when the anti-Semitism crisis right. in the Labour Party became much more uh, prominent than I even imagined it would be. And secondly, when it became clear that the Labour Party really was just going along and facilitating the Conservatives' approach on Brexit. Were you embarrassed, like one of your colleagues said yesterday, she said she was embarrassed to be, to be a member of the party. Yes. A member of the party that's led by somebody who associates with Hamas and, and terrorist organisations, but won't talk to the Israeli government representative. At it was, was that a point of embarrassment that, that for you? That was a point of embarrassment. And to have... To be part of a party where the leader's office operation was propagating narratives of states hostile to the UK, that was unforgivable. And I think, ultimately, the question for us that we didn't face... Let's just be honest about this in 2017. Nobody thought Labour was going to win that general election. So the prospect of Jeremy Corbyn uh, becoming Prime Minister and the team around him going into Number 10 and forming a cabinet was not a real one. But now it is, and in all conscience, we could not pretend that we could sponsor a Jeremy Corbyn premiership, the group around him going into Number 10 and that cabinet. And, th and that was, that's a real moral dilemma, I think, facing each M Labour him, MP. Sugar? Is that personal to him because of his politics, because of your fears about his position? on anti-Semitism, I mean... Where, all of that, all of all that, of it. all of that. You okay. feel national, it's him. Se national security was a huge concern. Mm -hmm. The straw that broke the camel's back for me, in a way, was Brexit. Making impossible promises that you do not know how you're going to deliver on. We just need a more grown-up politics, and we need to give people more of a choice. And we felt that we're in a unique and privileged position. I'm so lucky to represent the area I grew up in, but we're in an extremely privileged position as members of parliament to actually do something about it. If, we, if we're saying, look, every, lots of people watching this programme will be like, I'm so fed up of the same old politics, the same old parties, and we're like, well, actually, do you know what? We agree with you, but the difference is we are members of parliament, so we're in a position okay. to actually do something about that. Well, we me, felt we have a duty. Sorry, and and even, even if that means we end up being kicked out of politics in the future, we're prepared to go down fighting, as it were, for what we believe in and do the right thing, because actually being right by your values and your principles is actually more important to all of us than remaining MPs. This is... people. You know, sometimes people say, oh, you're all careerist. This is, like, the ultimate non-careerist <laughs> thing to do what we've done here. And it's in the national interest. We can't go on like this. Look how broken it is. I mean, it's great for you guys. It's great news. Every... All this drama, all this chaos, but it's bad for the British people. And I can see how emotional you are about it. You look very emotional this morning. Well, I just think we deserve better as a country. Can I get practical? I just want to ask a couple of practical yeah. questions. Now, one of the things that's been uh, uh, held at you is that you stood uh, at the last election for the people of Stratton as a member of the Labour Party. The decent thing, the Labour Party yes. now says, is for you to now step down, allow a by-election and see if they do vote you back. Well, one of the reasons I've done what I've done is because the Labour Party has taken a stance completely opposite to those of my constituents. I represent the seat that scored the highest Remain vote in 2016 in that mm. EU referendum. And the Labour Party is taking a completely different position. And I was very clear about this. So is that yes or no? Well, the, the, the answer to the question... I'm explaining to you why I do not believe that a by-election is justified. The second thing is, is that under our constitution, and one of our values is we believe in parliamentary democracy, and in a parliamentary democracy, you elect the individual first and foremost, and then the party label follows that. I was elected as an individual. I have a contract mm. which I haven't broken 
broken with my constituents. The Labour Party has broken it. And let's just be honest, I mean, there was a, the famous pictures, I think, of Brenda from Bristol, who was like, oh, God, not another... What, another one? Uh, I, I, another election. To be having a whole series of by-elections right now? I, I don't understand. think that's what Sorry, the British I just want to ask. Want. And where is your money going to come from? Well, at Chaka. the moment, well, if you you, you showed the will first... there be transparency over Absolutely. that? Absolutely. Um, you would have seen that press conference. You used the, some of the pictures from there. We all funded that ourselves. We've got a website again. We've kind of funded that ourselves. But my gosh, we're going to need help and support. And people watching this who like what I'm saying, visit the Independent Group online and help support us. We've had thousands right. of mm. small and yes donations. No, and took a yes, yes or no, because we're way over time now. Um, I ask yes. this question of so many Labour politicians. I get very different answers. You've talked about Corbyn being an embarrassment to you. Is he a Marxist, in your view? I think so, yes. Thank you. That's it. Okay, <laughs> that was a good way no, to answer. Straight answer so, to a straight so question. And would you, on that question. And would you take the Vince's answer. call if he was to call later? Well, what we're saying is all the established parties and, you know, the, the Tory party has major problems, mm. has been captured by the right. The Labour Party captured by the left. Unfortunately for the Liberal Democrats, you know, they lost the trust of the British people. And what we're saying is we actually need something new. So whether, whatever party you're on, Liberal, Conservative, whatever, if you share our values, we're inviting you, come and be independent like us. That's the first step, because people want to see the status quo smashed, frankly. They want something different. And so that's our inter invitation. If we start doing backroom deals, alliances, this and that, oh. I just think that stinks too much of the status quo. People want something new, and we want to create it. And we're saying to people, look, if you want an alternative, help us build it. Okay. And as you said, maybe a new party name and title and leader in nine months. Thank you very much indeed.